Father, we come, first of all, just to give you thanks for who you are. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. How mighty you are, Lord. And in all of that, you are kind and uh, full of loving kindness, Lord. And so I, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for this time um, to share about this subject. Lord, it's hard. It's heavy. Um, but I thank you that you are using individuals such as Natalie um, to open our eyes, Lord, and, and um, help families who are missing their loved ones, Lord, because they have gone missing. Um, mm, I feel the healing, Lord, because more individuals will become aware of what it is that um, we need to see, Lord, that we need to be looking out for. Again, I just thank you so much for she and her uh, sister-in-law, Lord, and them just moving on your behalf in this earth, Lord, to bring comfort to families, to bring celebration, Lord, to uh, families, um, to bring forth healing. And I, again, I just thank you. I can't thank you enough. I, I thank you for this platform, Lord, that you have nudged me into, Lord, to be able to share um, information to be able to share individuals gifts lord that again more may come to know these subjects and the individuals lord but they will also ask themselves who am i they're gonna ask you lord who am i and why did you create me uh, to begin that conversation with you lord that they may go and move about on your behalf doing the very thing that you have created them to do. So I thank you. I give you glory and honor for who you are and all that you are, Lord. I thank you for uh, those young people, old people, Lord, all in between, Father, who will uh, be found because Lord uh, Natalie and her sister, Lord, said yes to you. So again, we just thank you and I bless you. Uh, have your most awesome and gorgeous way through this conversation, Lord, and just do you just do you lord i just thank you and i bless you in jesus name amen 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 amen, amen. Woo, 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 woo. all right miss natalie oh yeah. my goodness oh my goodness thank you so much uh welcome to big hug conversations i truly mm -hmm. thank you thank you thank you for saying yes to the vision that god has placed within me to spotlight people like you spotlight organizations like yours who are doing amazing things in this world, who are um, making a difference, who are bringing forth healing and comfort and, and even uh, times of celebration for uh, when those family members are found. But indeed, I'm, I, we're going to get into that, uh, in, into the portion that I am about to say. I'm sure that your work gets heavy. I'm sure that it, it is um, a, a weighted thing um, spiritually, um, but wow, the fact that you guys said yes, 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 yes to this gift, this vision that God placed within you, and um, indeed, he is doing a mighty work through you all, and I can't wait for us to have this conversation, so be <laughs> quiet, <laughs> so that others may come to know um, who you are. So if you would, Miss Natalie Wilson, please share with the world, um, who are you? Okay, well, first, thank you so much for having me and it's great to see you again. Um, it's been a couple of years since we met um, at the 5K, um, I can't even remember, what was it in 2019? I think it was in 2019. I think so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I still have my medal too, I should have brought it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so before the pandemic. So thank you for having me on your platform to talk about this issue. And again, I'm Natalie Wilson. I am the co-founder of the Black and Missing Foundation. And we are a nonprofit organization that brings awareness to missing people of color. 
um, and that is across the country. And in this role, I am bringing my close to two decades of experience in PR and media relations to bridge the gap between media coverage and missing persons, which is so vital. Um, what we're finding when we first started the organization is that race was a barrier to families getting coverage, news coverage and law enforcement assistance um, for their missing loved ones. And I'm so grateful and humbled and blessed to say that, you know, because of the work, we've been able to take this organization from our living room as a vision to the view and to just about every, you know, talk show or local and national um, media outlet. But we still have a long ways to go. We've done a lot of work. When we started the organization, only 7% of the missing persons cases that got coverage were those of color, 7%. So we still have a lot more work to do. We have made some inroads, but um, it's definitely needed. Um, you know, media coverage is vital because one, it will alert the community. It alerts all of us that someone is missing, but most importantly, it puts pressure on law enforcement to add resources to the case. And, you know, when we started the organization, we didn't know anyone of color that had gotten that national press. You know, I'll ask your audience to name anybody, you know, man, woman, child, black or brown that had gotten that national press or media coverage, you can't. But you can name the Natalie Holloways, the Gabby Petitos, you know, the Chandra Levy, the Elizabeth Smarts, and the names go on and on. But can you name the Quiche Jacobs? You know, so many names, so many people that are missing. Wow, wow. Uh, whew, where to start? Where, where I, I know you said that, you know, you had that background, you guys came together, but like, where did that thought, that seed begin and the passion to say yes this is what we're going to do let's put this together and let's move in this manner where that come from well the inspiration behind the organization is a beautiful young lady by the name of tamika houston and she went missing from Derrick's hometown of spartanburg south carolina and we read how her family and really her aunt rebecca who's in the same profession that i'm in media relations really struggled to get that national media coverage. A year later, Natalie Holloway disappeared. We all know who she is. She dominated the news cycle. And we were so disheartened and, and really angry that to learn that Tamika's aunt went to those same reporters, the same programs, the same networks, and she was met with silence or there was no interest in Tamika's story. So Derek and I decided to do some research. And at the time we found that 30% of all persons missing were of color, mostly men. And we were so surprised that the numbers were as lopsided as they were. So we said, why not us? Again, I'm in media relations, public relations, Derek is in law enforcement. And those are the two critical professions needed to help find and bring awareness to our missing. And now to know that the population of missing persons, 40% of them are persons of color. Wow. That is very eye-opening and it's very disheartening. And what keeps us going, because initially when we started, we said, you know, if we can bring one person home, we did our job. But we found that there were so many more, hundreds of thousands of people of color reported missing every year. And families were coming to us and saying, we have nowhere else to turn. Can you help us, please? We are desperate. We couldn't turn away. We had to use our gifts, our resources to help these families. Wow. 
Wow. Just, well, I mean, my mind is blown to, first of all, sadden, right? You know, you have all these emotions going on um, about Tamika. Um, and then you get excited, right? That there are individuals who have the knowledge to get the word out, you know, coming together saying, yes, let's do that. Mm -hmm. And then you're on another roller coaster because to know that there are that many people of color who are missing, yet we don't hear about it. So mm -hmm. that tells us that between law enforcement and the media, you know, it, it's not getting the play. Um, so there's this whole range of emotion that one goes through. I can imagine that with you two being the, the, the movement of this organization, if I'm feeling this, and you're in it, you see, you see more than, than we do. How, how do you keep going when you constantly see, you know, one um, may get to a place of, oh my gosh, I, I if I see another or if I hear another, it might be easy to give up. And I know, you know, as you said uh, before, but how you keep going with the weight, with the, yeah. So a couple of things, really, it's our calling. And I am quiet, very reserved, but I am very tenacious. And my goal is to make sure that we receive coverage for our missing. And my PR strategy is to make sure that there are household names too. So do I run into barriers? Absolutely. Does the burden get heavy? Yes. Am I crying all the time? Yes. I'm devastated for these families. I'm frustrated, but we are their lifeline. And I, I mean, I, I put myself in their shoes. It could be my loved one. It could be me that's missing. Mm -hmm. And I would want someone to be sensitive to the issue and to jump in and help. And when I get tired or weary, I'm Caribbean. And I listen to my Calypso or Soka music. I cry it out. Mm -hmm. And then I get back up and do what I have to do because these families are counting on us. And to look a family member in the face whose son or daughter, loved one is missing and say, you know what, I'm tired. I don't feel like it today. Like, how awful is that? I can't say that. We can't say that to families. So again, we just have to, you know, do what we have to do to strengthen ourselves and keep our cup full so that we can continue to help these families. And we've made great inroads with media partnerships with partnerships with the law enforcement to help bring home, you know, our missing. And I will say that we have provided closure to close to 400 cases, but that's just, you know, scratching the surface. There's so many more that are missing and we need our community to get involved. What we're realizing is if it's not top of mind, or if you're not personally affected by it, people don't seem to care or they want to act. So we can't just blame or point the finger at law enforcement and the media. Our community plays a role because someone knows something. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. The community is key mm -hmm. to finding. Um, are missing. Mm. And I want to add that I know, we know that there's a sense of distrust between law enforcement and the minority community, but we have an anonymous tip line at BAMFI.org. You know, if you know something, report it to us anonymously. It, when you see these profiles, we send out alerts many times a day. Don't just discard it because you don't know the person. Hey, like it, 
share it, help it to go viral and share it within your network because all it takes is one person to come forward with information to provide some comfort or answers or closure for a family. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, and we'll get that information out uh, as well when we share um, how to reach out to you. Um, what other avenues are there that you get the word out? Um, I know you said that you are a PR um, that uh, specialist and what or, or, other organizations do you partner with? So we, awareness is key. Let me just say that awareness about this issue is vital. And we cannot wait for the new cycle. Um, we've had challenges. Um, there's, you know, I remember a time where a mother reached out to us to get news coverage for her daughter. And I called every news station and no one would pick up the story. So we utilize social media because it's inst instantaneous, it's vast, and we don't have to rely on anyone. It's us creating, you know, the flyers and we're getting the word out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's one way. Um, and as far as partnerships, we do partner with a number of organizations to provide resources for families um, once they have been you know, located, um, they may need to be rehabilitated or they just need counseling, therapy, you know, whatever services they need, we do have partners that can assist with it. But again, going back to the community, we need their help in, you know, sharing the information, sharing the flyers, um, because we can't wait on a new cycle. We can't wait for three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock. Time is of the essence. Um, I live in DC and we often travel to New York on the Sella. And guess what? Within two and a half hours, I'm from D I'm leaving DC and I'm in New York. No one asks for ID. We're on the train. And think about if someone is being trafficked wow. through Amtrak. You know, within a couple of hours, they are in another state. So we need this information to go far and wide. Wow. Wow. That's a great point. Mm. Um, a question in reference to, you said that you are in D.C., that you travel to uh, New York. Are most of the individuals or families that you work with, are they local or are you widespread throughout the, um, the United States, other countries? So we are a national organization. So we um, provide assistance for people of color throughout the country. But I will say that um, since the pandemic, we have seen an uptick in cases, particularly in in areas like Chicago, Atlanta, Detroit, um, Chicago, Baltimore. Um, and you know, this issue is pretty much affecting every state, but there's some more than others. Okay. Um, I wanna ask about trends. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you seem to, do you, does it seem that there are um, certain reasons as to why um, we go missing? Um, and, and when I say that, I hear a lot in the news about um, sex trafficking, but I also hear about um, the harvesting of organs and things like that. When you guys are working on a particular case or even, you know, when you find um, someone, is does it seem like there is a certain trend? Um, I think you understood what I said, <laughs> what I was trying to say. That's fine. So people are 
missing for a number of reasons. Um, since the pandemic, we have seen an increase in cases because of mental health issues. And that's a subject as a community is pretty much taboo that we need to tap into. We've also seen a rise in domestic violence cases. You know, oftentimes the children or the person that's being abused can at least leave the house to go to school or to work. Now with everyone pretty much working virtually, we are stuck at home with the abuser. Um, sex trafficking, we are spending most of our time online and guess who else is as well? The pedophiles and the predators. And they are connecting with our children without them even leaving home, without even leaving through the front door. So we ask parents to have those tough conversations. And even adults, you know, with social media, we tend to overshare and post. I am at the train station heading to New York. Um, or heading to Miami and here I am at the hotel. We, we just share everything. You never know who's watching. And in regards to sex trafficking, the grooming process isn't a day or two. We've had um, a case most recently out of Atlanta where the predator had been grooming a young girl that he befriended on an app for two years wow. and they had this really sophisticated encrypted you know messaging so when he sent her something she would read it and then it would automatically disappear and wow. he paid someone I mean she became comfortable with him I mean think about it you've right. known this person for two years or you think you know someone for two years and he paid someone a thousand dollars to pick her up took her to Texas from Atlanta, did all sorts of things, sent her to another pedophile in Connecticut. And it was just disheartening what this 14 year old girl went through. And her parents had no clue. And of course they're beating themselves up. They're like, how do we not know? But they just, they didn't. So again, it's having those tough conversations with our children. And we ask parents all the time. So if you have any parents that are listening, create a fictitious account on social media and see if you can befriend your child. Mm. And you'll be surprised how comfortable they will become in sharing information with you. They may even share, you know, where they go to school, their home. And what we're noticing that the pedophiles are doing is not only are they, um, you know, befriending one person, they're, bef they're befriending everyone within their circle. So everyone is thinking, oh, he's John's friend. So he's my friend, you know, he knows them. And then they're also telling them, you know, I completely understand what you're going through. Your mother doesn't know. She just doesn't like you. And, you know, they're making them feel good and they're comfortable and they know who to tap into who are the vulnerable ones so definitely have those conversations with your children because you know they don't have to leave the front door to be a victim of sex trafficking the predators are coming through our homes through any type of device that has a chat feature to it mm. Wow, you think about all the video games that they play and wow. Thank you, that is, that is real, that's really good. Thank you so much. Um, question in reference to um, how, how are you guys able to do all of this? I mean, it sounds like you are doing amazing things, which you are. How are you able to do that? You know, fun wise, are you? Um, seeking donations or are you partnering with larger organizations that help, you know, you funnel your supplies for flyers and mm -hmm. all of that, your media uh, uh, costs? How do you well, most of our donations are from individuals or private donations, but I will say that we can do so much more to strengthen our team if we had our community 
to rally behind us financially. And we can bring home more people because we would have more programs and processes in place. Um, you know, and we just keep going again. When you see the smile, when you see the sense of relief on the face of a mother or a grandparent or someone who has lost or someone who has a missing loved one, you have to keep going yeah. because they can breathe. They can sleep at night and think about it. And I'm not comparing a person to a cell phone or keys, but we are so attached to our cell phones. If you misplace it, oh my gosh, we're going crazy. Mm -hmm. Think about if your child is missing or your loved one is missing, you is magnified even more. Yeah. So, you know, and let's look at what I, what I want us to do, what we want us to do is look at these missing individuals as valuable members of our society, their mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, grandparents, you know, and even though they may have a past, they're still worth finding. Amen. And let's, you know, let's bring them home. Amen. How can we, the public, support you guys, what you do? Well, a couple of ways, some low-hanging fruit, go to our website at bamfi.org. See who's missing from your jurisdiction. Let's start there. See yeah. who's missing from your community and like, share those flyers within your network, within your community to help bring that person home. And of course, financial support. We definitely need um, help to create flyers. You'll be surprised so many people are missing and they're found deceased and family members don't have insurance. So we help them with burial mm -hmm. you know, services. Flyers, um, we printed a hundred flyers the other day for uh, a family and it was close to $300. That's expensive. Um, and these families many times don't have that resource. And let's have these conversations in our faith-based, you know, organizations. So, or a civic organization. If you belong to a group or organization, a church, invite us to come in and talk and spread the word. Um, because again, awareness is key. And that's how we bring about change by spreading the word. Yeah. That is good. I would love to... Um, for us to sit and come up with a, 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 a rally day or rally week or, you know, some sort of for you guys, big hug lady hey. and black and missing foundation that we just do, you know, a week of getting those funds yeah. in, or, you know? Yes. And I forgot to mention yeah. on May 21st, we will be having our 5K at the National Harbor again. And our anniversary is May 24th. And we're asking the community to rally around us by wearing orange. And if you can't attend the 5K, um, you know, maybe you can have one or host one within your community and have a satellite 5K. Love it. I love that. I can remember um, when we came, uh, when I say we, the, um, the church at the time, and, and we brought our youth group to uh, yeah. come and, and help you guys uh, with registrations and um, holding up the signs through the community. And mm -hmm. um, it, was, it was a beautiful experience. It really was. And um, that was a, an eye opener for me mm -hmm. uh, to be in the presence of those families who is um, they're searching, they're searching for their missing loved one. So yes, let's rally around. Them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And crying, we have to rally around these families, you know, that are. And that's what it's about. We need, we need to be there for them. We need to be, 
there to support them. Yeah. Because it's it's a tough time for them. And just give them hope. Think about it. There many times they lose hope. Yeah. And sometimes hope is all you have to just, you know, go one more day, one more hour, one more minute, and know that, you know, that's what we try to tell them. We're walking alongside you. Um, we don't want you to give up because we're not giving up. And we hold on to them, hold on to their hand, and do all that we can to help them. Woo, Natalie, Natalie, Natalie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, um, I thank you. I, I really thank you for this conversation. And um, as as hard as I, I think it is for me, it has doesn't even compare to the families. And that's where my heart goes out to those individuals who, um, who don't have rest um, because their, their family member is still out there and they're wondering and, and all of that. They don't have peace. And so I will continue to um, pray for them for just, Look, that we get our world together to the point where there is nobody harming or trying to, you know, seek out to harm another person. And I know that may be far-fetched, but you, I am praying, Lord, he is on the throne and he could do and change all things. Um, and, but in the, min, in the meantime, um, I will continue to pray and I will continue to support this organization. I love the fact that um, you said yes to a rally um, with Big Hug Lady and um, Black and Missing Foundation. And, and um, I, we're going to sit down and we're going to have that conversation and when we can um, put that together and just really go hard in getting the word out so we can get some funds and to help, to help you guys, to help support those family members um, and, and to bring those individuals back home. And, and of course, when they come home, they will need that counseling, you know, so. And can I just add one thing? We yes, ma'am. Seeking a grant writer. So if any of your you know, listeners, your audience, if they have grant writing experience, please um, you know, submit your resume to us. You can go to our website again and upload that or share that information because we, or, or if you, need, you know of a company that does grant writing, there's, I think this is grant writing season or it's coming up soon. And there's so many grants out there that I know that we, you know, can secure. So awesome. Is there any other avenues um, or positions or any other way that others can help with? Could they come in to the office to do flyers or um, or from where they live, you know, from there the from their home, are they able to, you know, help you on the computer wise? And are there other avenues? Well, yeah. So we are seeking um, other support. Um, we are, since the pandemic, we're rebuilding our structure and our processes. Um, but I will say we're very guarded. This is, this is our baby and labor of love. And we want to make sure that Families are treated with sensitivity, with respect and love during their most difficult time. So as um, positions become available, we'll definitely post them. But um, right now, you know, we're just, we're just hammering away and creating partnerships. I will say that the Black press has been amazing in this movement. Um, since the documentary, we have seen a lot of traction with news media and law enforcement agencies that want to do a better job and want to talk about biases, their biases, whether it's intentional or not, and how we can bring about change. So, you know, we're moving, we're trending in the right direction. And as I've said before, we've come a long way, but we still have more work to do. Awesome.
Now you mentioned um, a documentary. Will you please mm -hmm. share about that? Okay. Um, so last, I believe it's Thanksgiving, um, the documentary on HBO called Black and Missing aired. And it really gave a bird's eye view as to the challenges that we face and family members face in getting media coverage and law enforcement assistance um, for their missing loved ones. It is a production um, by Soledad O'Brien and to have her come alongside us to want to bring awareness to this issue has been, you know, it's just so amazing for us. And last night we learned that the documentary won an NAACP award for, yes, for the directors. Um, so it's a win and it shows that the community is engaged and, you know, they're joining the movement. So we're grateful for that. Oh my goodness. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! <laughs> yes. Oh, so. that is so beautiful. Yes, 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 yes. Because, you know, as you said, it brings forth awareness. More yes. people are hearing about it, will hear about it. Mm -hmm. um, and oh my gosh, yes. I'm super duper excited. Super duper yes. excited yes. about that. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you, thank you. You know, the team has been the HBO team, the Soledad O'Brien's team, our team. We've been fully vested. Um, it was two years, close to three years in the making. We've been taping all that time, even through COVID. And, you know, it's a labor of love and dedication to a wonderful project. So it's still streaming on HBO Max. And I hope that your, your viewers you know, just check it out and let us know what you think. Awesome. Yes, I will definitely add that to the link. Oh my goodness. Yeah, thank you. I'm so excited for you. So excited for you guys. Okay, Miss Natalie, is there anything that you would like to share? Anything else that you would like to share? You know, I'd like to close by saying it's all of us, law enforcement, the media and the community. Um, we all play a role in helping us find us. We can't do it alone. Amen. Amen. Okay. So one last question that I ask everyone, every guest, um, like a big hug. I guess, how do I want to rephrase this? A big hug says so much such as, I love you, I miss you, I'm here for you. Um, if you could give the world the biggest hug ever, what would you say? My hug would say, you'll be okay. Mm. You'll be okay. Sometimes you just need that reassurance um, that you know what, I'll get through this and everything's going to be okay. You got me teared up. I don't think I did. <laughs> I think this might be I'm the first the time. <laughs> now. <laughs> I'm the crier, but no. I love it. I love <laughs> it. You'll be okay. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Now that's that what you need to hear. You'll be okay. That right there really does feel like the biggest hug ever. <laughs> so I thank you. I thank you again. Oh my goodness. I mean, tremendously for saying yes, for saying yes to, um, you know, coming on and uh, sharing your story and sharing the story of others so that we could get that word out. You could get that word out about um, how we can help so many families um, through their time and, and then help bring um, those individuals back home uh, yeah. so that they can celebrate. Uh, woo. So I, again, I thank you. I mean, I'm just like tongue-tied today God. because <laughs> woo, it is indeed it's, a sensitive. It's a heavy, heavy yeah. subject. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. full disclosure, when I have these interviews, it's hard for me to decompress until late into the night. And I'm an early bird and, and it's, 
you know, when you live through it day in and day out, it's like, okay, you know, you got to get it together. But like I said, these families need us. They, they're desperately searching. They're desperate. And the sad thing is families are being scammed um, out of their life savings. So if anyone, and God forbid this ever happens, if you have a missing loved one, you've created a flyer, do not put your personal information out there because people are scamming families. They're like, you know, I know where your loved one is. You have to pay me a ransom or they'll have someone call in the middle of the night, um, you know, pretending to be that missing person. I remember a mother saying she got a call at three in the morning and someone said, mommy. And the person said it just like that, like her oh. daughter and you know, she paid this ransom and they lost it all from people scamming them. So that's the flip side of it. These families are being victimized yet again. So please contact us. I hope you, no one ever needs our service, but please contact the Black and Missing Foundation. We will create a flyer for you um, so that you can distribute to your network within your community. And we'll put our anonymous um, information on tip line on there as well as law enforcement's um, information. Awesome. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I You're can't welcome. thank you enough. Thank you. I appreciate everything. Um, mm, I, I know. I'm just going in. I'm just, look, I'm just going. <laughs> I'm just going to uh, end with Again, thank you. And we are definitely going to rally behind you guys and help those individuals um, and help you help those individuals. So, yeah. Miss Natalie of the Black and Missing Foundation, super duper gorgeous blessings to you, my. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. And the biggest hug ever. <laughs> <laughs> yes thank uh, you mm, mm, mm. i love you i hope that you have a peaceful evening thank you i'm gonna pray about your decompressing tonight yeah, so. well, i have work to do so i'll be up for a little while i'll be up all right well again i thank you and you have a peaceful evening my dear thank you mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> <laughs> bye -bye. all right bye-bye